Good evening and welcome to Sunset News this Monday evening. As always, we bring in news, community stories, economics, weather and sports. I am Glenora Shipura. Getting into the news tonight, Minister of Justice Yvonne Dauseb has proposed a sweeping set of reforms to the divorce law, including protecting the privacy of certain legal proceedings and restricting public access to court documents. These reforms also include the elimination of legal concepts of restitution of conjugal rights which forces spouses to live together and judicial separation, which stipulates the legal separation without divorce. It also plans to change the High Court Act of 1990 and the Magistrates Court Act of 19, 1944 to grant certain courts the jurisdiction to handle divorce cases. In her call for leave to introduce a new divorce bill last week, the Justice Minister seeks to consolidate and reform the law on divorces with significant changes to the grounds of divorce custody arrangements, spousal maintenance and related matters that leave be given to introduce a bill to consolidate and reform the law to amend the High Court Act of 1990 to make certain consequential amendments, amend the Magistrates Courts Act 1944 to confer jurisdictions on a court established in terms of the Act to deal with divorce proceedings and to provide for incidental matters. Among the key provisions outlined in the bill are the abolition of common law grounds for divorce as well as grounds for divorce specified in legislation predating the Act. Dalseb also proposed that the new divorce bill should establish clear guidelines for custody, guardianship and access to children of the marriage. Furthermore, the proposed legislation addresses the financial aspects of divorce including spousal and child maintenance as well as the forfeiture of patrimonial benefits a bill to provide for custody, guardianship of and access to children of the marriage, provide for spousal maintenance, child maintenance, financial and other consequences of divorce, provide for periodical allowances, financial and other consequences of annulment of marriage, and provide for forfeiture of patrimonial benefits, the notice read. Getting into our next story, a group of individuals from Rundus and Diama were initially registered for drought relief claim they have been unfairly omitted from the program during the verification process. The affected individuals claim to have followed the proper procedures of registering their names as instructed. However, they were unexpectedly excluded during the verification phase. Hileni Amadila, the group's spokesperson, told Namibian Sun that despite the attempts to seek assistance from the Rundu Consular's office, their cries have fallen on deaf ears. We tried going to the Consular's office, but the Consular was not around. We are tired of this story, so now we want answers from the Prime Minister's office. We feel bad because we are a group of unemployed people and this drought food would have helped us and our families. The Prime Minister recently assured us on a radio broadcast that everyone should get food. That's not fair at all. During the verification process, we waited for them to come, but they did not. Weeks later, we saw trucks filled with trucks handling out food to people who were on the list, which did not have our names on. The trucks left with food while we stood there without having received anything, she said. Amadila added that the group had considered organizing a demonstration to voice their grievances but found the process too complicated. The chairperson of the Kalango East Regional Council, Damien Magayambayi, told Namibian Sun that his office has not received such a complaint yet. The Electoral Commission of Namibia's Biometric General Voter Registration data is currently hosted by a foreign company called Topan Gravity, headquartered in Hong Kong and an African office in South Africa. The ECN, after denying this on Wednesday, eventually confirmed on Sunday that the tender was awarded to the original supplier, Face Technology, now trading at Topan Gravity during the 2011-2012 financial year by the then Tender Board of Namibia. The tender was for the supply, delivery, installation, commissioning, operating and maintaining software, system software and supporting infrastructure for the mobile voters registration system. Reinventing the wheel through a new supplier would have not only resulted in the customized biometric voter registration system being completely discarded, said Peter Shama, the ECN electoral and referenda officer on Sunday afternoon. He insisted that this system was designed and developed exclusively for the ECN to enable the Commission to manage voter registration processes and maintain credible voters' register. Shama also pointed out that this enabled the ECN to migrate 
from a manual paper-based voter registration system to a custom-made biometric voters registration system. According to him, the system was specifically designed and developed for the management of the ECN voters registrar and its architectural application, which remains purposeful for life and cannot be readily found on any market. The Health Ministry, which rejected the renaming of the Angela District Hospital after the late struggle icon, well-decorated and accomplished Dr. Naftali Hamata, says that health facilities are primarily named after their location and that position will be maintained. This is contained in a letter dated the 9th of October 2023 by the Health Ministry's Executive Director Ben Nangombe to former Ohangwena Health Director John Hango. Nambian's son understands that the request was made by the family of the late Hamata early last year through the Okwanyama Traditional Authority following his death on the 1st of March 2023 at the age of 78 in a private hospital in the northern of Namibia. The request was discussed by the steering committee on the 9th of August 2023. The steering committee fully appreciates the important role that the late Dr. Naftal Hamata played in the health sector, both in public and private settings. The letter read, the steering committee could not find a way to recommend the renaming of Angela District Hospital. Several years ago, a similar request was made to rename the same hospital after another person. The said request was not supported. It is thus important to maintain consistency. To date, public health facilities are named primarily according to localities where they are located. However, the family of the late Hamata did not take the response kindly and went to, the, to write an approval letter dated the 20th of November 2023 to Health Minister Kalumbi Shangula. The appeal letter written by Deyamo Popiyenawa, who chaired the Honouring Dr. Hamata Committee, told Shangula that they wanted a sitting with him to discuss the matter. You can read more about these stories in tomorrow's Namibian Sun. On the other side of the break, we take a look at our story of the day. Connection. It's in the human touch, the feeling of belonging. It inspires us and empowers us, creates clarity from complexity. It starts new conversations, unlocks the power of advice, and makes an impact on your life. At Alex Forbes, we pioneer insight to provide you with advice that connects your decisions of today to your impact tomorrow. Getting into our story of the day, speaking at a remembrance event held in honor of the late President Hage Gengob at Ongwediva on Saturday, Vice President Nutumbo Nandindaitwa shed light on the late President's role in the attainment of the country's independence and how he led the government under difficult circumstances. Kenya Kambowe contributed this video. Of the feminine footprints of President Gengob, which obliged us to convene here, are a powerful testimony of a life of courage, sacrifice, a life well lived in service of the Namibian people, Africa, and humanity at large. And I can say this with confidence because I have been with him internationally before and after Namibia's independence. It is indeed fitting that we align the brick that will ensure that his leaders live on as the theme of this memorial lecture intends to do. You will agree with me that it's hard to find an entry point for a discussion about the legacy of President Gento. Particularly for a person who has known him for 49 years, 8 months. How do we narrow down the legacy of a leader who started this journey as a freedom fighter, a petitioner to the United Nations, and later 
to a party director of elections in 1989 that they've seen the birth of our independence. Should we start with his journey on the eve of independence as a concessional chairperson of the Constituent Assembly or as an effective founding prime minister of an independent Namibia? Or should I limit my reflection on his courageous and the scholarly tenure as president of our republic, which was shortly interrupted on the 4th of February this year. I respect, I respect of where we, irrespective of where we start and the end, in all those roles, President Genkop made seminal contribution which merit memorization of his work in service of Namibia and humanity at large. Swinging over to economic news, Fly Namibia has announced that flights to Katima Mulilo will transition from Eros Airport to Hosea Kutako International Airport. We expand on this story after the break. Are you tired of just hanging around at home or waiting for something to do? Check out eticket.diary.my.na for what's hot on the social scene across the country. Or if you're arranging an event you'd like us to feature, contact jereen at we.com.na. We can sell your tickets too. Expanding on what was highlighted before the break, the shift according to the airline will also allow for the introduction of a triangular route linking Ventuk Hosea Kotako International Airport, Mount Botswana and Katiba Mulilo, effective the 3rd of July 2024. According to Fly Namibia Managing Director Andre Compion, until the end of October, selected flights will operate on this route on Wednesdays, Fridays and Sundays with a routing system designed to enhance overall connectivity within the region. We are excited to introduce the strategic changes to our flight operations by transitioning our flights to Hosea Kutako International Airport and introducing enhanced connectivity between Ventuk, Maun and Katima. We are not only improving access for travelers, but also catalyzing tourism growth in the Zambese region, he said. He further added that following the conclusion of the triangular route in October, Fly Namibia will resume direct flights between Ventuk, Hosea Kutako International Airport and Katima Mulilo on designated Wednesdays, Fridays and Sundays. The, di the direct flight schedule will continue indefinitely, providing long-term accessibility to Katima Mulilo. The initiative aims to streamline passenger traffic flow to Katima Mulilo and unlock the region's tourism potential, he said. Flanobius operates domestic routes from Eros Airport in Ventuk to Ondangwa, Katima Mulilo, Ludres, and Orange Mund. We now take a look at our financial indicators. The Nambian dollar trades against the British pound at 23.86, against the euro at 20.18, against the US dollar at 18.81. Two Nambian dollars and 59 cents gets you one Chinese yuan. On the commodities market, platinum went down while gold, copper and brand crude oil went up. Brand crude oil trading at 1.17%, going for 80 US dollars and 61 cents per barrel. In international news, Blinken in Middle East to sell Gaza ceasefire deal. Hmm. E-Ticket, your online ticket solution for events and event marketing bringing you ease of mind and making sure that your event gets out there.
For more information, contact events at nmh.com.na. Getting into our international news, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has arrived in Egypt as he attempts to build regional support for a draft Gaza peace deal recently unveiled by President Joe Biden. The top American diplomat is on his eighth visit to the Middle East since the start of the war in Gaza. Blinken will first meet Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi before talks later on Monday with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Mediators in the region, which also include Qatar, have been attempting to negotiate a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas for months. Netanyahu has vowed to resist any such deal until Hamas' military and governing capabilities are destroyed and all hostages are released. On Saturday, Israel's forces, backed by airstrikes, freed four more captives after fighting intense gun battles with Hamas in and around the Nusariyad refugee camp. The Hamas-run health ministry in Gaza said the raid killed 274 people, including children and other civilians. Israel says fewer than 100 people died in the operation. After the offensive, Hamas political leaders said the group would not agree to a ceasefire deal unless it achieved security for Palestinians. Blinken will use his trip to urge Arab leaders to pressure Hamas into accepting the ceasefire for hostage release deal that the U.S. desperately seeks. The three-phase plan set out 10 days ago by Mr. Biden would involve a six-week ceasefire that will become permanent and the rebuilding of Gaza with international assistance. The president called it Israel's proposal in an attempt to effectively bounce the two sides into progress. Biden's officials claim the text is nearly identical to one endorsed by Hamas last month. The only thing standing in the way of achieving the ceasefire is Hamas. It is time for them to accept the deal, Mr. Blinken said on Saturday. Hamas is likely to demand guarantees that the plan would lead to a permanent ceasefire and full Israeli withdrawal from the Gaza Strip. Its political leadership in Doha has yet to formally respond to the proposal, according to U.S. and Israeli officials, so it remains to be seen whether indirect negotiations can resume. We now take a look at our weather predictions. Katima Mulilo can expect sunny weather conditions with a minimum of 8 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 26 degrees Celsius. Kobabes can also expect sunny weather conditions with a minimum of 8 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 22 degrees Celsius. Morientel can expect party cloudy conditions with a minimum of 12 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 26 degrees Celsius. While Orange Moon can also expect party cloudy conditions with a minimum of 14 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 24 degrees Celsius. After the break, we'll take a look at our sports news brought to you by Ari Hohat. Introducing 061 Express, brought to you by Synergy in proud partnership with Ventuk Express. Here's your chance to make your voice heard to celebrate the businesses that make Ventuk exceptional. From your favorite coffee spot to the salon that always gets your style just right. It's time to shine a spotlight on the gems of our city. Over the next eight weeks, it's your chance to vote for your favorites to recognize the best of the best. Nominations open on the 21st of April and close on the 5th of May. To nominate your favorite business, simply save this number. 085-785-6231 and WhatsApp hashtag 061 Express or scan the QR code below and follow the on-screen instructions. By nominating your favorites, you're not only supporting local businesses, but you also stand a chance to win your share of 50,000 Namibian dollars in cash. The voting process will be the same as the nominations process, using the Synergy chatbot and the hashtag 061 Express. Voting opens on June 5th and closes on June 23rd. Make sure to cast your vote for the best of the best. The winners will be announced on June 28th. 061 Express, celebrating the heartbeat of Ventuk. Get ready to make your mark.
Good day everyone, time for international sports news and starting off with Formula One racing news. Uh, the next Formula One race will be in two weeks time. That will be the Spanish Grand Prix on the 23rd of June. And uh, what happened over the weekend is the Canadian Grand Prix Max Verstappen winning a very exciting race and uh, Lando Norris second in his McLaren and uh, it was George Russell, Mercedes-Benz third. The standings after this race, after the Canadian Grand Prix now is Max Verstappen still leading comfortably on 194 points. Now, that is uh, with six wins in the season so far, followed by Charlotte Leclerc on 138 days in his Ferrari and in third on that points position Lando Norris doing well for McLaren this season, 131 points and uh, he's uh, moving in closer to the second position there in fourth position, Carlos Sainz 108 and Sergio Perez is on 107 Continuing international sports news with golf news uh, related to John Rahm. He's on the men's world ranking number seven at the moment, playing at uh, Live Golf at the moment, but he's got a foot injury, so he didn't complete the Live Golf tournament in Houston. There's an injury concern that he might not be able to play in the US Open that starts in a few weeks' time on the 13th of June. And uh, he didn't complete his uh, second round in the Live Golf tournament, and that tournament was won by Mexican Carlos Ortiz. Um, he won it on a total of 15 under par over. 54 holes. On the men's PGA tournament, uh, it was the Memorial Tournament won by Scotty Scheffler, the world number one. Uh, that was his fifth tournament win for the season. He finished on minus eight for the four rounds, followed uh, by one shot back by Colin Marukawa. And uh, also a great performance by South African Christian Besaidnot, finishing uh, fourth position on his own with a score of minus three for the four rounds. And closing off today's international sports news, it is soccer news. Uh, that is soccer news from Manchester United. Still not clear if Eric Ten Hag will remain on as coach for Manchester United. There's strong speculation that uh, he might not be the coach uh, leading into the new season. And uh, he had a blow pass season for Manchester United, but he finished off with a great win in the FA Cup. Um, so it's uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, the owner that was make, must make a decision on Eric Ten Hag. There was speculation that uh, Sir Ratcliffe, Jim Ratcliffe did meet with another coach coach that is Thomas Tuchel and uh, he's the former coach of Bayern Munich and also Chelsea apparently met with him in France uh, but it was Tuchel that said that he's not uh, interested in coaching now he's uh, coached too much the last few years and he wants to take a break from coaching so still uncertain what's happening at Manchester United at the moment it is still Eric Ten Hag in the position as the coach of Manchester United that's international sports news for today hope you have a great sport day and we talk international sport again tomorrow goodbye Introducing 061 Express, brought to you by Synergy in proud partnership with Vintage Express. Here's your chance to make your voice heard to celebrate the businesses that make Vintage exceptional. From your favorite coffee spot to the salon that always gets your style just right. It's time to shine a spotlight on the gems of our city. Over the next eight weeks, it's your chance to vote for your favorites to recognize the best of the best. Nominations open on the 21st of April and close on the 5th of May. To nominate your favorite business, simply save this number, 085-785-6231. And WhatsApp, hashtag 061 Express, or scan the QR code below and follow the on-screen instructions. By nominating your favorites, you're not only supporting local businesses, but you also stand a chance to win your share of 50,000 Namibian dollars in cash. The voting process will be the same as the nominations process, using the Synergy chatbot and the hashtag 061 Express. Voting opens on June 5th and closes on June 23rd. Make sure to cast your vote for the best of the best. The winners will be announced on June 28th, 061 Express, celebrating the heartbeat of Ventuk. Get ready to make your mark.
Well, that brings us to the end of the broadcast. Do make sure you join Sunset News on Facebook on all the NMH platforms on weekdays, as well as on our website, oneup2.com, Sunset News screens on DSTV Channel 285 and GoTV Channel 25 every weekday and Sundays from 7.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. I am Glenn Rashipura. Until next time.